Thursday at 6 on Town Hall. On World News Tonight this Friday, that residue of explosives found on board TWA 800. There is a possible explanation. The doctors in our Friday report about your health, the heart exam that every woman will want to know about. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin tonight with TWA Flight 800, which blew apart in the sky over the Atlantic Ocean off New York's Long Island nine weeks ago now. The theory that a bomb may have caused the explosion, already based on very scant evidence, appears to have been struck a blow today. The FBI believes it can now explain where the residue of explosives found on a few pieces of the wreckage may have come from. Here is our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. Since the crash in July, the FBI's working theory that the plane was brought down by a bomb was based largely on the discovery of trace elements of chemicals, PETN and RDX, found in plastic explosives. Now that theory has been undermined with the discovery that one month before the crash, airport police in St. Louis had purposely placed plastic explosives on the plane as part of a training exercise for bomb-sniffing dogs and then removed the material after the exercise. The FBI learned all this only yesterday and it has put the investigation into a tailspin. If the trace elements of chemicals came from the explosives used in the training session, it would leave no evidence at all that a bomb brought down the TWA flight. And it strengthens the growing theory that a mechanical malfunction connected with the plane's center fuel tank and possibly faulty fuel pumps was responsible for the crash that killed 230 people. Brian Ross, ABC News, New York. On the other side of the country today, news about the Unabomber. In Sacramento, California, another pretrial hearing for the accused Unabomber Theodore Kaczynski. In court, a federal prosecutor revealed they have what they believe is a confession. Here's ABC's Brian Rooney. While discussing what he described as a foot-thick stack of documents collected from Kaczynski's Montana cabin, Assistant U.S. Attorney Robert Cleary revealed the existence of what he called a day-to-day -day journal. Cleary said that in the journal, Kaczynski admitted committing all 16 of the bombings attributed to the Unabomber. Paraphrasing, Cleary said the defendant wrote, I mailed that bomb, I sent that bomb. Cleary said in some cases he's reflecting his desire to kill. The hearing was not intended to be an examination of evidence. Federal Judge Garland Burrell cut Cleary off, saying he'd heard enough. Kaczynski hasn't been seen in public since he was moved to Sacramento for trial. He was not in court today, and his lawyer declined to discuss the journal. Well, you got to understand the prosecution has one view of the case, we have another view of the case, and it'll all come out of trial. But today, before trial, prosecutors revealed what they said is the backbone of their case. Brian Rooney, ABC News. In a moment, the other news, the Russian president and his serious health problem that has been a secret until today. And later in the broadcast, heart disease. It's the leading killer of women, and there's a test that can save a life on your health. And our person of the week. The view from above. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Brought to you by Just for Men. Men, is gray hair sneaking up on you? Right under your nose? Making you look too old? Whoa, it is sneaking up on me. Up here, too. You need Just for Men gel. Made for the hard-to-color gray of mustaches and sideburns. Simply brush in this no-drip gel and in five minutes rinse. Gray's gone. Your mustache and sideburns blend perfectly with your natural hair color. That gray won't sneak up on me again. Just for Men Gel. The sure thing for a natural look. Can't believe he broke it at the company picnic. <sighs> Incredible. Our employee health plan covers him, right? Not deductibles or co-payments. So he has to lay out his own money. Your health plan can work better with Aflac. Supplemental insurance from Aflac helps cover the unexpected costs of recovery so you can give your employees the protection they need and deserve. Any ideas? Yeah, Aflac. Aflac, insuring over 40 million people worldwide. From Moscow tonight, there is quite stunning news about Russian President Boris Yeltsin's health. He had another heart attack this summer, which the Kremlin kept secret. Two weeks ago, Mr. Yeltsin finally admitted that he needs a heart operation. Today, in an exclusive interview with us, the surgeon who was supposed to perform the operation told ABC's Gillian Finley why there is such urgency. 
The revelations came in what may be the frankest interview a Kremlin doctor has ever given. Did he suffer a heart attack in, in July? Yeah, July. The end of June or July. Before the second round of the election, Mr. In Yeltsin? fact, you could see it on his SEG. But that's not been acknowledged, has it, publicly? Publicly, no. The Kremlin has never satisfactorily explained just what happened to Russia's president. During the election campaign, at first, his energy seemed to defy both his age and medical history. But by election day, he was clearly a different man. Aides blamed a cold and exhaustion. They, Dr. Akchurin, the surgeon who would perform the coronary bypass, said before the election it was not in Yeltsin's political interest to tell the truth. Could you imagine that what... None of this has been reported here yet, but even before today, Yeltsin's political opponents were beginning to question his ability to govern. One of them today declaring that Russia should start preparing itself for Yeltsin's successor. Julian Finley, ABC News, Moscow. The surgeon who talked to Julian Finley today was trained in the United States by one of the world's most famous cardiac surgeons. Dr. Michael DeBakey pioneered heart bypass surgery in the 1960s. And at the request of the Kremlin, he's going to fly to Moscow this weekend to consult with Mr. Yeltsin's own physicians. And so we had some questions for Dr. DeBakey earlier today. Are you surprised to hear that uh, President Yeltsin had a second heart attack, which none of us have ever known about? Well, I'm not surprised, uh, but uh, it's certainly, you know, it's, it's new to me. I didn't know that. Does it worry you in terms of a forthcoming surgery? Yes, there's a possibility that each attack damages the heart a little bit more. And so that would suggest that uh, there may be more damage to the heart than, than the first heart attack produced. So when Dr. Akshurin says to us he cannot guarantee well, when it will happen, he may not be fit enough, what does that tell you? Well, that, seems to, that, that suggests that his condition is, is reasonably serious. And that means that they are taking their time to try to prepare him for the operation. Dr. DeBakey says he'll know a good deal more when he actually gets to Moscow. But there are political ramifications to all this even now, once we've asked our national security correspondent, Jack McCrethy, to join us from Washington. Jack, in terms of international stability, how seriously does Washington take this news we passed on to you earlier today? Very seriously, Peter. In fact, people throughout the U.S. government were stunned. They did not know that Boris Yeltsin had actually had a heart attack. Will this country come apart if Boris Yeltsin were to die? Most American analysts do not think so. They think that uh, their Russia will go ahead and follow its constitutional roadmap and hold elections three months after whenever that might happen. Uh, and they believe then there will be many question marks about who will succeed him. Of course, what the U.S. is concerned about are things like the nuclear weapons, the growing criminal element uh, in Russia, and what Russia may do to its borders. Those are all unknown. Okay. John McCrethy at the Pentagon, thanks very much indeed. We'll uh, monitor this very carefully over the weekend and next week. And when we come back this evening, an answer to the number one medical problem for women. Claritin. You've got to ask your doctor about Claritin. It's time you experience Claritin. Ask your doctor for a prescription. I did. Clear days and nights are here. Ask your doctor about Claritin today and call 1-800-CLARITIN. Today, people who didn't send the money Western Union and the heartbreak it caused meet Sue and her boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend, Mike. What happened, Sue? My car broke down. I called Mr. Wonderful here. Send money, I said. And he didn't use Western Union. No, and it took forever. I had to spend hours with the tow truck guy. Mm -hmm. Meet Sue's new fiance, the tow truck guy, Lyle! Hey, it's your money. Use Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. They really lowered the prices. Most restaurants, they go up, this place, they go down. I can't get him out unless there are low prices. Under $10. <laughs> Red Lobster introduces new low prices. Now 15 luscious dinners under $10. You get shrimp, crab, salmon. Try our succulent shrimp combo. Savory scampi and beer-battered shrimp. I like shrimp. I'm a shrimp eater. With salad and Cheddar Bay biscuits, all this just $7.99. New low prices at Red Lobster now. Then we can even afford dessert. So what a wonderful place. The job needs four guys now, and the guys need all their equipment. You're working harder than ever. You need a truck that does too. 
Meet the all-new 1997 Ford F-150. The only full-size pickup with a standard super cab third door. 60-40 split rear bench and standard dual airbags. Plus a taller cab for more hat and boot room than ever. After all, the guys aren't getting any smaller. The new Ford F-150. Strength after strength after strength. You have a 30-year mortgage. So shouldn't you have a 30-year faucet? Moen. Buy it for looks. Buy it for life. Tonight, you've heard the doles. Now it's my interview with the President and Mrs. Clinton, as you've rarely seen them. Personal and intimate. A 2020 exclusive. 2020. Winner of the Emmy for Best Investigative Reporting. Tonight. On your health tonight, important news for women. This is about heart disease, which claims the lives of half a million women in the country every year. In fact, heart disease kills more women than all forms of cancer combined. Women are at greater risk than men because of problems detecting the disease. Here's our medical editor, Tim Johnson. Marie Zambonini has heart disease. But as with many women, doctors had a hard time diagnosing it. They tested for everything. I had a lot of jaw pain, too. That's another sign. And I was having a lot of pain in my teeth. And I had been to dentists. I had been sent to specialists. They wanted to uh, root canal my entire mouth. <laughs> Dr. Marianne Legato, a leading women's heart expert, says diagnosing heart disease is more difficult in women than men. Women's hearts are not just smaller, but the normal function of the heart is different from that of men. To compound this, the major tool used to look for heart disease, the electrocardiogram, is inaccurate almost 30% of the time in women. But doctors are hopeful this machine will help. It's called the stress echocardiogram, stress echo for short. And some doctors believe it is now the most accurate way of diagnosing heart disease in women. The stress echo is an ultrasound exam of the heart. That means no radiation and no injections. It uses sound waves to produce images of the heart at rest and during exercise. Unlike other tests, the stress echo provides immediate results. Classically, it's in the chest. But currently, only a minority of cardiologists can accurately interpret a stress echo. Dr. Benjamin Lewis, one of the leading authorities on stress echo, urges women with risk factors like high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, and smoking or symptoms such as shortness of breath or pain or tightness in the chest to insist on having this test. Our goal is, in fact, to try and prevent the first heart attack, not just to deal with the problems that follow it. Doctors Lewis and Legato also say it is critical that women recognize and report symptoms to their doctor. Do you always feel dizzy when you change position, like standing up? Oftentimes. And if symptoms persist, they too must insist on a stress echo interpreted by someone who has lots of experience. I'm Dr. Timothy Johnson, and that's your help. In the same field, thousands of people may soon have a new source of living tissue and organs for transplant. The government has issued guidelines that will now open the way for the body parts of animals to be used in human beings on a much greater scale. ABC's George Strait from Washington. 3,000 people die each year waiting for an organ transplant. The new guidelines govern how surgeons can use various tissues and organs from any animal to meet that shortage. For now, baboons will be the primary source. The stakes are extremely high. People are dying by the thousands every year in this country, and we just have no way at this point in time of meeting that incredible demand. Hi, Doc. How, how are you? Feeling? Good. One of Dr. Robert Mitchler's heart patients, Frank Torrey, like says he would reluctantly would accept a baboon heart until a human heart is found. And if they assured me here at Columbia that they could do that, you know, and it was safe, then I would go along with it. Safety is the key issue. Baboons carry many viruses and other microorganisms that can cause diseases in humans. The guidelines say any animals used must be thoroughly screened. The patient's continually monitored for new types of infections, and all infection control procedures must be approved by the FDA. We're being very careful here. We're trying to minimize risk to the greatest possible extent. Three people have received organs from baboons. The FDA points to Jeff Getty, who last year got baboon bone marrow to treat his HIV infection. 
It didn't cure that infection, but so far, there have been no side effects. Still, critics say the guidelines cannot protect the public because it's impossible to breed disease-free baboons. It's an unnecessary risk. You're playing Russian roulette uh, by putting um, baboon tissues into humans because of the infectious disease risk. Nevertheless, the FDA says the potential benefits of using animal organs for transplant outweigh the potential risks. George Strait, ABC News, Washington. There is an unusual amount of news about the heart today. Here's some particularly good news. Not very complicated either. We know some chocoholics are going to be very happy with this. Go ahead. It's good for your heart. In the British medical journal The Lancet, doctors write that chocolate contains chemicals called phenols, which keep your arteries from clogging up. Clogging up. And there is more. Because red wine works in much the same way, the doctors say that a glass of wine and chocolate together are even better. So have a nice weekend. We'll be back in just a moment. When I was a kid, I had to take penicillin for nine years. Probably it saved my life. I think that bacteria, having evolved over the last four billion years, they have a lot of tricks up their sleeves. There's a real need out there. There are people that are dying now. Literally, there's a 35% mortality rate that's been reported for some of these infections that, you know, there's no drug left. I'm a pharmaceutical company researcher. I'm involved in the oxazolidinone project. We're developing these compounds for treating gram-positive infections that are multi-drug resistant. My hopes really are that someday some kid will have the drugs that I've been working on for the last eight years available to them to save their life. What better place than an NFL game to ask people about the taste of Wheaties, the breakfast of champions? Well, you can really taste the whole wheat. I like it. Well, I like the taste. They've got a toasted whole wheat flavor. Can I have another bite? <laughs> These have got a crunchy, toasted taste to them. I'm going to run home and buy a box of Wheaties for me and my kids. <laughs> Try the championship taste of toasted whole wheat Wheaties. Now, for a limited time, you can score by collecting all three Wheaties NFL All-Pro boxes. You better eat your Wheaties. Hey, that's my line. Nobody does it like you The way that you do Nobody's got the power to please me The Hoover Steam Vac Deluxe with a five-brush agitator. It washes and extracts dirt like a whole crew of professionals. So, you know, there's really no comparison. Nobody does it like you Hoover, nobody does it like you Presidential politics was all about illegal drugs today and some of the toughest campaign commercials so far. The back and forth between opposing camps began when the Dole campaign released a new television ad that was very critical of the president in a very personal way. Here's ABC Sam Donaldson. President Clinton appeared amused this morning when he was told by reporters about the latest Dole ad. An ad that accuses him of sowing moral confusion about drugs. The ad, in part, says... And in front of our children on MTV, the president himself. If you had it to do over again, would you inhale? Sure, if I could. I tried before. <laughs> Bill Clinton, he just doesn't get it. Dole's running mate, Jack Kemp, expanded on the message. Today, in the fight against drugs, this president is a wall. He's missing in action. He is not using the bully pulpit. That did it. The vaunted Clinton attack response team swung into action. At a downtown Portland, Oregon rally, where the Secret Service gave the president extra protection because some bullet tips, no powder or casings, had been found in a nearby street, Mr. Clinton himself began the response on the high road. You will hear a lot of rhetoric back and forth, maybe a lot of characterizations of people's motives. I tried to stay away from that. I don't want to demean anybody. I want this to be an election season of ideas, not insults. But back at the press center, campaign spokesman Joe Lockhart was breathing fire. It was a significant turn uh, into much more negative and personal politics and uh, should be seen as a desperate act from a desperate campaign. Lockhart said the president was just being lighthearted when he said he'd have inhaled if he could. But in an interview this week with Barbara Walters, Mr. Clinton explained it another way. Did you really say you were sorry you didn't inhale? 
what I said was that I was trying to say that I actually tried. I was not trying to exonerate myself when I said I didn't inhale, that I had an allergy and couldn't do it. I wish I'd never done any of that, uh, although I did such a little bit, but it was wrong. By late today, the Clinton ad team had their response ad shot. To fight drugs, all Bob Dole offers are slogans. Just don't do it. And that's how it goes in modern campaigns. Punch and counterpunch within hours of each other. Whatever the road they take, they'll both travel at about 90 miles an hour between now and Election Day. Sam Donaldson, ABC News, with the Clinton campaign in Portland, Oregon. You can see Barbara Walters' entire interview with the president and Mrs. Clinton later this evening on 2020. And a final political note, Ross Perot has filed a complaint with the Federal Election Commission because that presidential panel voted to exclude him from the televised presidential debates. And Mr. Perot is going to file a lawsuit on Monday. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrials gained more than 20 points to close at 58.88. On the NASDAQ market, stocks gained about 7 points. There has been another astonishing find of an ancient, intact human being in Europe. In Austria today, the skeleton of a girl thought to be 6,500 years old, 1,200 years older than the Iceman discovered frozen in an alpine glacier five years ago, was put on display. Scientists studying her teeth estimate she was 12 or 13 when she died. Her curled position suggests that she was trying to stay warm and froze to death. We'll have our person of the week right after this. Is your hip okay? How's the pain? I feel great. I took some Tylenol. Extra strength. Oh, I'm still surprised the doctor gave you Tylenol after your hip surgery. Hey, I wouldn't let you down on our anniversary. Oh. <laughs> you can feel it start to burn. All you can think about is getting rid of it quickly. Finally, I asked my doctor. He said my lanta was made to work fast where heartburn hurts most, all through here. My doctor said my lanta. See, Bob, was that your daughter on hard copy last night? Hey, Bob, they never find your gold card? Hey, Bob, I hear your neighbor's suing you. Bob, your computer crashed. Hi, Bob. What about your root canal? Bummer. Woo! Looks like you stepped in something, Chief. Life gotten a little crazy? Try the simple sanity of an Accord sedan. From Honda. Until now, the idea for every new washing machine has come out of every old washing machine. And you won't find any new ideas until you look into this amazing new GE washer. New ideas like the largest capacity tub you can buy to save up to 75 loads a year. Our smoothest, quietest spin cycle and even an enlarged opening for easy loading. Our new GE washer is the best we've ever made because it's just one good idea after another. I'm Steve Dunn, more local news at 6.30. The presidential party is over in Portland. Will the West Coast swing help Clinton's re-election bid? It's not a crown, but a cowboy hat and Wrangler jeans for this queen. Find out why in Channel 2 News at 6.30. Finally this evening, our person of the week. We are not the first to celebrate her accomplishments, nor will we be the last. But she has been making a very unusual contribution to mankind for the last several months, and we have very much admired her from a distance. And we do mean a distance. I guess I'll say I get a ride home. <laughs> oh, Shannon Lucid, we've all looked up and imagined you looking down and wondered, and we appreciate the lesson you have taught us. Uh, Be so patient. Whenever they're ready, then they'll come get me. And they have. This morning, Dr. Lucid was off the Russian space station and on board the shuttle Atlantis and eager to share with Good Morning America that she's a bit homesick. It'll be really good to get home. I'll agree with you. Of course it will. Shannon Lucid has spent most of 1996, 240 miles up there above the Earth, in the tiny confines of a Russian space station. The Atlantis took her up there in March. I just want to say I'm happy to be here. Our exasperation for her that her homecoming is so overdue should by no means eclipse her accomplishments. At 53, she is America's most experienced astronaut, a biochemist born in China to American missionaries who has spent more time in space than any American. I really and truly 
did not ever get bored. I always had something to do. This is the second time an American has lived on board the space station Mir. It is cooperative science living up there with the Russians, trying to learn how people will fare after long periods in space. That will be vital when we chase our destiny a bit farther out. Of course, one of the big things that everyone really likes to do is look out of the window and look at the Earth. And the days turn to weeks and then to months. I've been able to see the seasonal changes over the Earth. And as the rest of us went about our lives, rarely looking up, Shannon Lucid was looking down, and she saw spring. I got to see uh, the ice and all the lakes break up, and then I got to see the Earth green, and it was just a very, very neat experience. Space shots seem so commonplace, now we don't pay much attention to our astronauts anymore. But consider this. Anthropologists guess that since the dawn of time, Perhaps 20 billion people have lived. And yet only 352 have ever been in space. And on special days like Mother's Day, we are reminded of their sacrifice. Dr. Lucid has a husband and three grown children. I'd also like to say uh, happy Mother's Day to my children and to thank them for making me a mother. Back on Earth, as the spring turned into summer, Dr. Lucid was very busy. She had experiments to do. For example, how might wheat grow in space? Well, most of the time we're working, believe it or not. Most of the time we have things that uh, have to get done, or things that we have to do. Shannon Luce had spent much of August packing 2,300 pounds of her experiments to bring home. And then came the bad news. First there were problems with the shuttle, and then away down there, Hurricane Fran was chewing up the eastern seaboard, making it impossible to land. I haven't had a uh, shower or a bath since I left. Uh, I guess I left when? March 22nd? But Shannon Lucid took it all in stride, and she greeted every delay with a smile. When she gets home next Thursday, she says she'll go rollerblading with her children. Once she readjusts to gravity, which may take several months. And to the American taking her place, she had what seems very sensible advice. Well, I told him just to take it, uh, you know, day by day, and uh, not to worry about anything. It all works out. Everything will be okay. Day by day, and it all works out. And so we choose Dr. Shannon Lucid. She helped so many of us realize the joy of exploring new frontiers and then appreciate the simple pleasures of coming home. She'll be home next week. That is her report on World News Tonight. Later this evening on 2020, Barbara Walters' exclusive interview with President and Mrs. Clinton. Next week on Solutions, we will be looking at the problems of children and the solutions that can help parents. Have a good weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News.